All right, yes, yeah, so welcome back to the Balanced Diet of Teletainment this morning. Now, if you check your go, go, you go see, say, the level where they it could be quite sensitive for some people because now we don't enter. This one will concern you, it concern me, it concern everybody. Whether now you get picking, you know, whether now you born them. They say now one woman, I they born picking, but now community, now they train them. Now, based on information we don't get, between the year 2013 to 2017, over 22,000 patients where they treat now children and adolescents on top of mental health disorders. And that's now why we get this very casual guest for inside the studio. Because when it comes to the mental health of any child, it is very important to say that child is very casual. Even though for Nigeria, a kind one kind perception day on top of mental health. It'd be like saying a question or a topic what would they shy away from. But right now, uh, make I give you a little brief on the guest we'll get for inside the studio now. Now she, na Nigerian British, we don't get all round ed education on top expert, uh, all round education expert, and where they impact the lives of thousands during the course of her career. Now she gets BSc honors for inside applied uh, psychology from Sunderland University for the UK. She said, uh, don't get postgraduate certificate of education in secondary science. And she, now one of the people we don't collect one better qualification, whether they call the UK national qualification for Headship, and this one are one of the highest qualifications where if you get around the world for head teachers. With over 20 years experience for inside the teaching field, and with 17 years of leadership where they're under a belt, you're going to need to help me make welcome this very fantastic, strong woman where her name now Mrs. Chika Okorafo Anyeke. Welcome to this day. Thank you. Thank you so much for All having me. All right, make I start from the very beginning, um, teaching, education. What did make you decide in that, that particular profession you want to enter? Um, to make an impact, um, to, to give back, use my expertise. Um, and it was in an area of, of science and secondary school children where, you know, I know they, they go through um, a lot of things at that stage. So that's what really drew me to becoming a teacher. Beautiful. Now, looking at the child's mental health, um, how would you feel to explain them? in terms of child's mental health for children? Okay, so mental health generally is um, our psychological, our emotional, and our social well-being. It's really how we think, how we feel, how we act and react. Um, so it's very, very important at all life stages for childhood, adolescence, and for adults also. Um, and it's really bringing the awareness that the same way we take care of our physical health is the same way sh we should be taking care of our mental health. Mm. Um, it's not when something goes wrong. No, because for inside Nigeria, it can't be like saying a topic where people know they like to talk about. Um, you feel saying that the cultural environment of the day, or you feel say people generally know like to they talk about them because they think it's from... Uh, maybe a person pursue you for village on our witchcraft, you know. Why do we have that perception in Nigeria? Why do you think we have that? Okay, I don't think it's unique to Nigeria, the stigma attached to mental health and talking. Um, I think that's where a lot of awareness campaigns are, are so good now because they're bringing it to the open. Everybody wants to feel very strong um, and it's seen as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. But really, it's a sign of strength if we look after our mental health. Mm. So we could talk about the problems of, in terms of mental health for children. What do, we feel, what do you think say they cause them, especially in a setting like Africa? What you, which, which factors they, where, where they actually cause mental health going in the negative for children? Okay. Um, you know, there are so many things to pinpoint, you know, one or two things. Very, very difficult is a lot of external and internal factors. It could be down to family history of, of mental health issues. Oh, um, so wait, hold on. If you feel pass on from one generation to the other? It's very possible. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, it could be due to not sleeping enough, not getting the, um, the right nutrition, um, being worried. You know, children, we think children have no cares in the world. They have everything given to them, but they worry. They see their parents going through so much. They see so many things happening in our environment around us. And, you know, things like the ability to cope with stress, the resilience when something doesn't go right, um, if something has made them upset emotionally, you know, interactions or issues with their friends, all of those things can cause 
um, issues to arise. We could talk about some of the mental disorders where children they get. Let's mm -hmm. just name a few. The common ones where they and some signs where will you still know, know them? Okay. Um, I'm not a doctor yeah. um, and you know this shouldn't take the place of actually getting professional help if needed but things I have seen children um, uh, go through anxiety panic attacks um, so might I just hold you a little mm -hmm. bit when it comes to anxiety now they're going to shake physically or you're going to see the symptoms of anxiety because for we adults we can easily identify it but mm -hmm. for small begin which action they go do display to show say, so for that we adults go know say then they in anxiety and the person they suffer from. Yeah, I mean, you know, if a, if a child isn't speaking um, or if a child is not speaking too much, it could be crying, you know, emotional outbursts. Um, children are not always um, able to regulate their emotions. So it can be sort of um, either becoming very quiet, very withdrawn or, um, uh, you know, very emotional and crying and tantrums and outbursts and moods. Um, it can also be um, things like not sleeping properly, um, regressing or maybe bedwetting. Um, you know, it shows that the child is, is worried, um, you know, they're anxious about something. And, you know, sometimes as parents, we think, oh, you know, it can be bad behaviour, but we also need to be aware that it could be some other factors also. Mm. So some of these factors we'll talk about, how we fit to prevent them or even manage them in the situation of small picking. Because for we adults, we fit to talk what they do us for belly. You fit to talk, say, my hand, they pay me. My belly, they pay me. My yes. back. But for small picking, especially picking where never stab it, they talk. Or even the ones where they talk, the two way they do them for body, they don't explain them. Mm -hmm. So how we fit to um, manage that kind of, I know so you know be doctor, but how we fit to um, identify and even manage this mental wellness, quote unquote, of the child. Yeah, uh, it's a very good point that you, you bring up about um, complaining about something physical. Because in children, um, a lot of um, times, they may say they have a headache or they have a, a stomach ache and there's no reason for it, but it could be actually a, a symptom of their worry and their anxiety. Um, so, you know, as parents, we, we have to be aware where everybody is so busy to, to try and, um, you know, to, to slow down and talking. Talking is really important and listening also. Um, so you will hopefully notice a, a change and by talking and listening to the child um, and observing the child also, you, you, will, you, you will gain some, some information about, you know, what is going on and next steps that could be taken. How we go free to draw the line between reality and fiction when it comes to children? Because you know, say sometimes that can't be they throw. What I know they come up for their eye, you. <laughs> they're gonna do like say, everything they do. And 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 sometimes we know we know we need to understand when it is either for attention or really for a need. That's not what they ask. Say, how you go take draw the line? How we go feel no? Whether as parents, as guardian, no, no say okay, this way they do the picking, no, not for real. Or it's for attention, or it just they do and just to just worry person. Yeah. How can we draw the line between that reality and the fiction? Yeah, that's a, a fantastic question. Um, I, I don't know if we really always can, um, but we always have to sort of err on the side of caution that maybe there could be an underlying issue. I think we, we know our children, um, you know, well enough to know that when they, you know, really are just trying to manipulate us or whether it really is something that goes, uh, you know, a lot deeper. And, you know, a, a change maybe in, in the behavior. Um, there are also, also things like hormones in puberty oh, yeah. and, you know, those types of, um, you know, times in a child's life and coming in from tweenyhood to adulthood. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a journey with lots of ups and downs. Yeah, and, um, you know, for everybody, parents too, and parents and their mental health, you know, also take care of you. Don't be too hard on yourselves. Mm. Now, with your years of experience, over 20 years of experience really under your belt, what do you, you feel, say, the government and suppose get any special program to do to cater for this kind of, this category of children? Yes. I mean, all, all governments around the world, you know, part of their, their health plans and processes that they put in place have... Um, provisions for mental health and generally around the world there's there's a need and you know there everybody knows they have to bring more awareness to to mental health um, a lot of adults who deal with mental health later in life wish that they had got mental health help earlier 
um, many of the issues um, that we deal with as adults, the onset is around 10, 10 to 13. So, you know, the awareness, younger and younger, and the world that we live in today has changed so much. Um, and there's so much information and so much exposure that governments know that, you know, children and younger ages, the awareness needs to be there. Mm. In conjunction or in collaboration with what you talk, say, government is supposed to do, even us as individuals, what do you feel, say, we need to do to even better the package or the infrastructure with governments put in place for any country? Yeah, um, I think we all owe it to ourselves to be kind and compassionate to ourselves and to really um, take care of our, our mental health. We are very invested in our physical health and we should be, you know, just as invested even more in our emotional health, our, our mental health, because it's how we, um, we relate to one another. It's, you know, being positive in the community. Um, you know, there's so much to mental health. Um, it's not, like I say, when something goes wrong, let's not get to that point. Mm. So, Mika, I ask you, from your own per um, personal experience, 20 years, over 20 years, 23 to be precise, years of experience where you don't gather, um, tell us a scenario we get with a Pekin where you know, say, this Pekin, they suffer from something, and I need to speak with either the guardian or the parents. Tell us one of the experiences where you get. Yes. Um, as, a, as a teacher, very often, um, children do come to us and, and talk to us. Um, and I have had a, um, a lot of cases um, of different ages of, of, um, of children when they've, they've come to me and they've talked to me about an, an issue. Um, and I've at times felt that maybe there's a miscommunication between the child and at home. Um, and, you know, when I've got the parents in and we've talked together, things have come to light. Um, one child was really worried about the, the, the mum's um, health, physical health. Um, the mum had thought she had kept it quiet from the child, but actually the child knew Notice. something was wrong. And she was so worried, so worried. So she couldn't concentrate in school. She wasn't eating properly. She wasn't sleeping properly. And once we sat down and we talked about it, um, you know, the, there was such a relief from the child that she had been included. Um, and a relief from the parent that, you know, actually, OK, we can get through this together. And they had a very long, hard journey with, with the illness, but they, they had each other. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the age of the child. Obviously, if they're very young, then you deal with, with situations, you know, differently. Um, but always a communication back to parents, because parents usually have um, noticed something. Mm, very true. Now, as you just talk something, I'll say a lot of children, they can't talk to you as a teacher. And we notice, even me, if I don't personally notice, say a lot of times these children, they prefer to talk to a teacher or a third party um, as comparing, coming back to go and talk to their male or their pale. Maybe they feel say their male or pale go beat them because in an African setting, beating is a, is a form of tough love, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, why? We need to understand because some people don't understand, say, because in this case of your own way, you talk, say, you call the, mom, the parents and they talk with the Pekin. Some parents go, they talk to the Pekin, so why you not tell me first? Why you not come meet me? So let's understand why it be, say, um, sometimes the children find it more comfortable talking to a third party like a teacher as, compared, um, as against talking to the parents. Yeah. Um, it just shows that children are so much like, the, you know, people, adults, um, because very often we like talking to, a, um, you know, a third party. It's that they don't want to disappoint the parents. Really? Yes. At that they small they age? may not. Yes, they may not want to upset the parents. <gasps> um, they may not want to add to the worry to the parents. And you know, children from a young age, you know, they're add very. To worry. They, wow. they, you know, they actually really do think that's where this awareness is so important. Um, and in teaching, we always say, you know, as families, it takes a village, um, and to have. Um, responsible adults that aunties and uncles that your children can speak to um, that you will also speak to you know as long as we get the information it does it really matter who or where it's coming from the most important thing is to know that there is a, an issue that needs to be de dealt with beautiful now um, for you personally you get any project where you work on um, in terms of promoting mental um, wellness for on top picking them but then for here or anywhere else you get any project where you work on yes I oh, do please, let's talk um, about it. I have a, um, a company that I, I've just started Lenomic that's learn l-e-a-r-n and omic like automatic you oh. know we think that 
um, learning is automatic and mental health and, you know, um, looking after ourselves is automatic, but actually we can learn. So I have a, um, a wonderful um, program for schools um, working with children on um, their mental health and issues that come up through mindfulness. Um, because mindfulness is a, is, a, is a bit of a buzzword at the moment in the UK and around the world, and it actually has been proven to help with mental health and well-being, um, and also improve cognitive ability and learning in children. And mindfulness is really about being present, being aware in the moment. In um, Yes, yes, it really is. And... Um, it could be through breathing, it could be just paying attention to your environment and your surroundings and those around you. And it's amazing what you notice. Beautiful. Okay, so now this, this, now, this now company where you just start, and of course, um, we know say, a lot of people get so many questions because of time, we know yes. be our friend. Um, how people, if you actually reach out to you, children or even parents, they're in a similar situation, they don't even know how to handle Yes. the situation, especially with your children, how they fit actually reach out to you? Okay. Well, the best way is through email, I think, because then you can, we can, you know, people can write down exactly the information they require or the support. So again, that's Lenomic, L-E-A-R-N-O-M-I-C at gmail.com. Okay. Lenomic. You need to spell them again? Yes, Lenomic, L-E-A-R-N-O-M-I-C at gmail.com thank you so much now you just talk so you talk something also during this interview session we just remind me of um, children because you talk say sometimes they begin they fear to upset um the parents a lot of this speaking they come with an upset button naturally mm -hmm. you know and naturally from from <laughs> from birth a lot of them come with that so um it, it's it's good to you don't come outside and enlighten all those things talk about all those things for people because someone like me if i begin time say i don't want to vex i go look and say you they vex me plenty of time so unknowingly but um it's it's a good thing we're we're all educated on this thank you so much yes, thank you so much for the having studio. me wish you the very best to enjoy more of this our will get videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her.